So Roland Barthes uh, falls in the tradition of A.J. Kremas, Claude Bremond, Vladimir Propp, Sweeten Todorov, Gerard Dinin, who were together contributing to a journal. The title of the journal was Communications. In this journal of communications, they were all working on the structural theory and applying this structural theory of Saucer over various different texts, like some study folk tales, songs, myths, etc. And uh, this journal would publish all that they would write through study through structural theory uh, in the journal communication. These were people, Gina Todoro, Prop, Raymond Gremas, and Barthes was also a part of it. What were they trying to do, or, or in, if we are to summarize it in one or two lines, what they basically shared, the aim they shared, was that they were trying to find a, the aim was to devise a model through which they can study every text. These models would help them in analyzing the signifying elements, analyzing the signifying elements in a text, in a literary text. And the view would be to construct, therefore, a typology. Or I can help you remember this in pointers. So they try to devise a model that would help them analyze various different literary texts and through through this study, they were trying to find out if there is a particular typology that can be constructed to study every text. So this typology would be a typology of genres. This would help them divide texts based on a similar theme and find if there are any typologies in which it can be divided typologies of genre. So this was basically this, these finding out of typologies would basically mean to find if there is an, uh, a grammar can be established, which means a syntax if there is a particular syntax which can help us explain how a genre is defined, of what gives a structure to a particular uh, genre. So what grammar, what syntax, what rules underlies, uh, are underpinning a particular genre. So this would also mean that they were looking for long in every literary text, the rules of regulation, that were basically ruling the whole of an art piece. Say, for example, we pick up Vladimir Prop. He does the same study in the folk tales of uh, Russian folk tales. So, what he finds out in studying all these Russian folk tales, he finds that that there can be a model. We can devise a model for analyzing the text, any folk tale. He draws out typologies. He says that all these only have seven spheres of action. So he gave a typology. There are type one, type two, type three, type one, and seven spheres of action. And he also said, uh, not just action, but in, in, in uh, there are also just a few kinds of characters that you find in these stories. These, these he called functions. And he says, all these tales only have 31 functions, which means the way in which one character is related to another, and all these characters are related to another. So he finds out that all the texts, for example, have one villain, one hero, right? And in spheres of action, he will say, um, all the folk tales have um, evil fighting the good. This is one sphere of action common to all, evil fighting good. So what is he trying to do? finding a typology of genre. And by way of this, he is trying to establish a long a syntax of the whole folk tale study. Okay. 
Similarly, each one of them try to do the same thing to give you a typology types through which you can study the rest of the art. Is that clear with you? Does that does this need further explanation? So this grammar or long that was studied, this they called uh, or together, if you want to understand this, this is called finding a master code that is running the system. This would be the master code that's running the system. Okay. And then by contrast, what do you find in these tales? What do you find in detail? Other than that, if there is not a typology, what do you find then do you have? You find that the, in contrast, you, you have a discourse. A discourse or something that is also referred to as a surface structure. So this was looking at the deeper structures and this was looking at the surface structure. So some of these writers were looking at the master code, whereas others were working on something else. They were looking at the discourse. They were looking at the surface structures. This was called narrative discourses. So some people were into studying the narrative discourses, the overt uh, narration of a tale, overt narration in any art piece. And this was looking for master codes in all art. Is that clear? In this approach of finding a narrative discourse, this approach is basically concerned with the analysis in which a particular narratives are treated in the narrating, the way a text is told, the way a text is told, the mannerism of telling, so the focus of these people was on telling, whereas the focus of these people was syntax, structures, underlying structures. Now we come back to Roland Barthes, how he works on narrative discourse and how he works in the tradition of master code. Do you remember the two terms? narrative discourse and master code. If you have any questions, ask me. We'll move on to Roland Barthes after this.